Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Happy Monday, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hope you had a great weekend and ready to have a great week. Hey, uh, if you joined us last Friday, uh, I kind of did clear and confusing part one. Today is kind of clear and confusing part two. And I can't wait to get to heaven and ask Peter what he meant by some of this. Uh, You'll see what I mean as I read this. We're picking up in 1 Peter 4 and verse 1. And he writes, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you. But they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached, even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. So first of all, let me just deal with the things that are clear, because there's a lot more clear here than confusing, but we'll get to that. First of all, Jesus suffered physically, and, and Peter says when we suffer physically, then it helps us overcome our fleshly desires. You know, uh, James and Paul talk about the growth process of enduring through suffering, that it matures us, it makes us complete spiritually, it grows us up, if you will. So if you're going through difficult times, realize that God is using that to grow you, and it helps you to get past those fleshly pursuits and those fleshly temptations. So that's the first thing that's clear. The second thing is that Peter's really clear about don't go back to your old sinful life, uh, you know, it's always a temptation. Your, your old friends uh, want you to come and join them in the things that you used to do and you don't do anymore because you met Jesus and he set you free from sin and death and hell and temptation. But don't be surprised if those old friends write you off. It, it's kind of part of the equation because you're not joining them in the debauchery. They don't want to hang out with you anymore. You're not fun anymore because you're not engaged in self-destruction with them. Now, hopefully, they'll listen to you and and you can draw them to Jesus. But uh, if they don't respond to that, they're probably going to dismiss you as being part of their life. And then the third thing that's really clear is that everyone will give an account to God. Judgment is inevitable for all. Again, Hebrews says, For it is appointed a man once to die and then judgment, which is why every single one of us desperately and unequivocally needs Jesus. Uh, Without Jesus, we have no hope uh, facing judgment because we're guilty. Now, that leads us to the confusing. Because verse 6, about why the gospel is preached to the dead, so they can be judged in the flesh and alive in the spirit. Uh, We really uh, have no idea clearly what Peter is referencing. He could be talking about the spirits uh, from Noah's day that were in the passage uh, on Friday, you know, in chapter 3. He could be referencing the spiritually dead that we are sharing the gospel with, hoping that they'll come alive in Christ. You know, Paul says that you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but you've been made alive in Jesus. Uh, It really isn't clear. And one day I'm going to ask Peter if I care about it when I get to heaven. Probably won't. But what is clear is that everyone is going to face judgment. And everyone needs to experience a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And all of us need to be a part of that mission of telling them and loving them and serving them and calling them to experience the grace and love of God in Jesus Christ. And if we do that, then we're going to be blessed as well. I hope you have a great day.